ഹലോ ഞാൻ ജോസഫ് ജോർ എല്ലാവർക്കും എൻ്റെ പുതിയ യൂട്യൂബ് ചാനലിലേക്ക് സ്വാഗതം ഞാൻ ഇന്ന് നിങ്ങളെ കാണിക്കാൻ പോകുന്നത് കാൺറേ റോയൽ ബൊട്ടാണിക്കൽ ഗാർഡൻ്റെ വിശേഷങ്ങളാണ് അവിടെ ചെന്നിട്ട് നമുക്ക് അവിടുത്തെ വിശേഷങ്ങൾ ഇപ്പോൾ നമ്മൾ കാൻബ്രയൻ റോയൽ ബൊട്ടാണിക്കൽ ഗാർഡൻ്റെ എൻട്രൻസിൽ എത്തിയിരിക്കുകയാണ് ഇനി നമുക്ക് അതിൻ്റെ ഉള്ളിലേക്ക് കയറി അവിടുത്തെ കാഴ്ചകളൊക്കെ കാണാം സൗത്ത് ഈസ്റ്റ് മെൽബണിൽ നിന്ന് നാൽപ്പത്തി മൂന്ന് കിലോമീറ്റർ ഇങ്ങോട്ടുണ്ട് ഓന്താഗിൽ നിന്ന് ഒരു മണിക്കൂർ യാത്രയാണ് ഇങ്ങോട്ടുള്ളത് അതുപോലെ സിറ്റിയിൽ നിന്ന് ഏകദേശം ഒന്നര മണിക്കൂർ യാത്ര ചെയ്താൽ കാൻബ്രൻ റോയൽ ബൊട്ടാണിക്കൽ ഗാർഡനിൽ എത്താം അതുപോലെ ഇത് മുന്നൂറ്റി അറുപത്തി മൂന്ന് ഹെക്ടറിലാണ് ഇത് സ്ഥിതി ചെയ്യുന്നത് അതായത് അതായത് ഏകദേശം നമ്മുടെ തൊള്ളായിരം ഏക്കർ സ്ഥലത്താണ് വിശാലമായിട്ട് കിടക്കുകയാണ് ഭൂമി ഇതിൻ്റെ ഉള്ളിൽ ഒരു ലക്ഷത്തി എഴുപതിനായിരം പ്ലാൻസ് ഉണ്ടെന്നാണ് പറയുന്നത് ഈ ബൊട്ടാണിക്കൽ ഗാർഡൻ ഇവിടെ എസ്റ്റാബ്ലിഷ് ചെയ്തത് നയൻറ്റീൻ സെവൻറ്റീനിലാണ് ഇവിടെ കുട്ടികൾക്ക് കളിക്കാനായിട്ട് ഒത്തിരി ഐറ്റംസ് ഉണ്ട് വാട്ടർ ഫാൾസ് ഉണ്ട് സ്നേഹിക്ക് ഇതിനുള്ളിൽ സ്നേഹിക്ക് ഉണ്ട് കങ്കാരുണ്ട് വലവീസ് ഉണ്ട് മുമ്പാറ്റുണ്ട് അങ്ങനെ ഒരുപാട് കളിക്കാനുള്ള വാട്ടർ ഫാൾസ്
ഇത് തടി കൊണ്ടുണ്ടാക്കിയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു ഡൈനോസോറിന്റെ പ്രതിമയാണ് നന്നായിട്ടുണ്ട് ഇത് ഓസ്ട്രേലിയയിലെ ബാൻഡിക്കൂറ്റ് എന്ന് പറയുന്ന ആനിമലാണ് ഇതൊരു ഷട്ടിൽ ബസ്സാണ് ഇതിനുള്ളിൽ കയറണമെങ്കിൽ ഒരാൾക്ക് പത്ത് ഡോളർ വെച്ച് കൊടുക്കണം അപ്പോൾ ഇതിൻ്റെ ടിക്കറ്റ് നമ്മൾ എടുത്തിട്ടുണ്ട് അപ്പോൾ നമ്മൾ ഇതിന് ആ ഉള്ളിലേക്ക് കയറിയാണ് 
Now in this garden we have 170,000 native Australian plants. All Aussie plants from all over different parts of Australia. Pretty amazing place really. And this first garden, the diversity garden, they've actually roped off all these sections and put steel signs at the front to tee the areas where the plants come from. And you can see they've used different mulches everywhere. Black mulch here works really well with the red from the Grevillea rhyolitica. Bottle trees from Queensland, right next to you. Something really special at the moment. We've got some purple flowers here on the Sturts Desert Rose. Look at that. You know. So, like I say, when I come back, walk around, go for a walk, have a closer look, take a million photos like I always do, because this place is constantly changing. You know, every six, eight weeks, you, you can come here and you'll see something different. It's quite incredible the way this garden evolves. Now, we'll go a bit further forward here through the trees. We've got a big steel wall on this next garden. This is our water saving garden, this next one. Uses less water than your average backyard. It's a very dry garden. Now, what they've done here is they put some watering cans in this garden. Up the top, a red one. It's just for show because this is the dry end. Down the bottom is a blue watering can, meaning the plants at the bottom need a bit more water. And very dry though. Think about how many plants must be in there. Absolutely hundreds of them. And that uses less water than your average backyard. Just past the sign here, you'll see a bit of gold on those bushes. See the little round golden coloured flowers there? Yeah, Pisonia pinifolia or g -bun. Lots of technical names in here. It is a botanic garden. Drooping eucalypts, the silver princess, the cassia. And there's a little eucalypt past the rock in the middle there, leaning over. See the top of it? It's getting a flower. The eucalyptus ethrocoris comes from Western Australia. Gets a beautiful red scented flower with yellow around it. Really pretty. So again, go exploring. That's the trick to this place. Get an idea of this garden with my trip around it with you and then I'm exploring because there's so much to see. These trees here, look at the colour of these trunks, aren't they beautiful? These are not eucalypt trees, they're called Angothra costata from New South Wales. Losing their bark to get rid of parasites, clean themselves up. And then past those Angothra trees, we've got raised garden beds with red and white measuring poles, which is our future garden. All the plants on those raised garden beds have been changed in the science lab to give you different coloured flowers. For instance, close to us with the big leaves on that first raised garden bed, that's a waratah. Everyone knows waratahs, surely. You know that great big flower? Well, it's normally red. Well, this one, we call it bridal gown. It flowers white. So they've managed to manipulate it in the science lab and make it flower white. And that usually happens every springtime. So it's a really interesting garden to have a look at. Now, through the trees again, we've got what looks like bits of houses through there, the green picket fence down the far end closer to us more modern ideas for home gardens a couple of grass trees in this end one here you can see the grass is there the xan what's called xantharia and uh, another one of those little eucalypts there this drooping one the silver princess the cassia next garden children's play garden looks like everyone's gone home this was full up with people half an hour ago and uh, seven colored poles decorated are the sign for seven seasons that the Aboriginal people had in this area. And they used the plants and animals to depict their seasons. So when certain plants were flowering, they knew certain food was available. And that's how they worked out their seasons. So seven in this area. Around the corner here. We've got waterways here. A bit of yellow on the trees here. See the flowers on the left here beside you? Or um, for those of you facing the other way on the right, and uh, yeah, Tristani Opsilus Lorena is their botanical name. A lot of people call them water gum because they like a drink of water, but they're not eucalypts. And a little amphitheatre in there where people use for little seating areas, picnics. We have teachers on staff here for school programs, so it's a really great spot for that. But have a look on my side of the bus. The last of the flowering gums. Look at this big guy beside me. Look at the red up the top. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Now you've probably seen these as street trees around the place, used on traffic islands in quite a few parts uh, down here in Victoria. And they're not actually eucalypts, they're what's called Carimbia thicofolias, closely related to eucalypts. 
And someone says, what's the difference? Well, the difference is these carimbias have their flowers normally on the end because of, well, bushfires, overgrazing, overclearing, feral animals, all sorts of different reasons. And these particular plants, we've collected a lot of those rare ones, put them in there and tried to save them and grow them and see how, we, how they go. Coming up a little bit further, Looking on the left beside us, lots of small eucalypts. Some of these are starting to get buds on too. Eucalyptus petriolaris, there's only about 800 plus different types of eucalypt in Australia. These here are eucalypt mallee plants. Mallee plants grow off what's called a lignotuber, which is underneath the ground, like a big root sort of system. And uh, they grow into small trees, these eucalypts, and they have the highest concentration of eucalypt oil out of any of the eucalypts. And uh, they were heavily harvested in the early years for uh, for their leaves where they would then extract the oil out of them. That eucalypt oil we use for medicines and all sorts of different reasons. So we're um, we're growing a few of those there. Some of those uh, mallee plants were just about driven to extinction because of over, over uh, exploiting them, basically cutting them up. Mm. Now on my side of the bus, who likes kangaroo paw? Hey, right beside me, green kangaroo paw. For those of you who don't know what kangaroo paw are, just the shape of the kangaroo paw, the flowers. Have a look in front of us, Just we're just going to stop right there. We have a bandicoot just walking across the track, I won't go any further. Just let him, hopping around, see everyone's going home. The, the pointy, pointy nose, little guy, little bandicoot. First time I've seen one up this end of the garden. He's not too worried, is he? So the people have gone and they start to come out. Plus, it's overcast. So there you go. When we get down further, you might get to have a closer look. There's people in the back. There's hundreds of bandicoots in this garden. Because it's all doubly fenced, there's not too much in the way of predators. The occasional snake, that's about it. Yeah, so they're, they're pretty happy in here. The bandicoots, well the snakes aren't. We usually catch the snakes in the garden here and we take them out to the bushland. Yeah, relocate them. Hey, have a look at the grevilleas beside me here. Look at this big guy. Isn't that spectacular? Now these grevilleas have been grafted into what's called a standard. So they've actually been grafted onto grevillea banksai, which is silky oak. The big silky oak trees you get. And this grevillea on top, grafted together and sitting up like a nice big showpiece. My favourite kangaroo paw outside my door, the yellow with the red, look down below it, the gorgeous Malaluca there, all red, more red down here. Just about finished these kangaroo paw, been in flower since last spring, and they will be getting cut back very shortly. Bottle brush, everyone knows bottle brush, Callistamon subulatus, two big beds of them outside my door, look at what's moving in there, the birds, the New Holland honey, the birds are into the flowers. And they've just come out. You're so lucky, you know, you've left it so late in the day because it was fairly quiet with the bird life. But now that a lot of people have gone home, plus the rains come on, these birds, you know, they're into the moisture. Look at them. They're having a great old party in here. Hey, look at them all. That's like a nature tool. We've got birds, we've got bandicoots. Ah, this is great. Good stuff. Now, if you go walking around at all, Above us is a hill called House on the Hill, has a viewing platform over the water, hundreds of more plants, or you can walk around the bottom of this hill. Now before this was a garden, this was a sand mine. This is a huge hill of sand. It must have been absolutely enormous because they mined it for kind of 20 something years. And then in the 70s they finished with it, and that's when some entrepreneurs decided to employ a company, Taylor Cullity Lays Lane, architects, to design a garden to represent Australian environments. And then put all these Aussie plants in. This area here we're driving into now is called Malaluca Spitz. Malalucas are the paper bark trees or tea trees in here. And the spits meaning like sand spits. When a river meets the ocean, you get sand spits. Hence this has been built in such a way. And this was actually the last part we finished in 2012. So they started in the 70s, late 80s you could get into this garden and wander around. Official opening was 2006, but this wasn't finished till 2012. Across the water, big steel structure, represents gorges like Central Australia or the Kimberleys. 
and the water that's running there switches on and off automatically every 20 minutes. So it's a bit like in the north of Australia, the wet season and the dry season. So uh, the Aborigines had seven seasons here. We have four. In North Queensland, they have two. If you go to Fraser Island, the Aborigines there had 13 seasons. Right? So it depends on what part of Australia you're in. And it depends on their food sources. So that's how they work out the seasons. On the left, the walkway goes up to a rocky area. Weird and wonderful garden. Very interesting. Maybe a few strange plants up there. All Aussies though. And down below us, we've got a seaside garden. We all love the seaside, so what we've done here is we've done... Um, glad there's no baby in that frame. <laughs> there's the love. Seaside garden, you know that plant with the trees on the lean down here? Because at the seaside, the wind blows, and that's what happens. They grow on an angle, don't they? And the thongs, you might notice some thongs here. They come in any colour. They don't need much water. Seaside garden theme, yeah. And these beautiful walls, which are all dry stone, handmade walls. Absolutely gorgeous. Works of art, I call it. Now we've got display gardens up the top here. Let's have a buzz around them and tell you a bit about those. We've got trees and rows here, which are fig trees, ficus microcarpa, planted here to create these shady little areas for people to have picnics, especially on a hot day, you get a nice shady spot up here. This northern end has toilets. Now, on the 8th and 9th of May, if you want to buy plants from the friends from the garden who have their own nursery here, right in front of us, there will be a plant sale open to the public normally happens three times a year we haven't had one since 2019 of course so if you're interested in coming along 8th and 9th of may put that in the calendar if you wish to do that i think it's because of all that extra rain it's the best i've ever seen a bit further on i've got backyard garden different ideas for backyards raised garden beds grassy areas weird plants this plant here, it's a, it's an acacia or a wattle, and uh, it's been grafted to grow in the opposite direction. Yeah, acacia cultriformis. Uh, why did they do that? Because they can. <laughs> and you know what? It flowers. ഈ ഷട്ടിൽ ബസ്സിലെ ഡ്രൈവർ നമ്മുടെ അടുത്ത് ഇവിടുത്തെ പ്ലാൻസിനെ കുറിച്ചും അതിൻ്റെ ഡീറ്റെയിൽസ് ഒക്കെ വളരെ വ്യക്തമായിട്ട് പറഞ്ഞു തന്നിട്ടുണ്ട് എല്ലാവർക്കും അത് മനസ്സിലായി കാണുമെന്ന് കരുതുന്നു അപ്പോൾ ഇവിടെ വരാൻ ഉദ്ദേശിക്കുന്നവർ കുട്ടികളുമായി സമ്മർ സ്കൂൾ കോളിഡേയ്സിന് ഇവിടെ വരാൻ നോക്കുക അതാണ് കുട്ടികൾക്കും നല്ലത്